Hello everybody, today I am starting module 9 and this is the first lecture of this module. In the earlier lectures, in the module 8, I have discussed the vibration of a two dimensional element which was the membrane and today in this module, I will start the vibration of plate. So, today our topic of discussion will be vibration of rectangular plate. So, outlines of today's lecture is first I will give the introduction to the theory of thin plate, vibration of rectangular plate then it will be discussed and eigenvalue problem of simply supported rectangular plate will be considered. After that with the help of eigenvalues and eigen shapes, eigen functions we will actually discretize the partial differential equation of motion into ordinary differential equation with generalized time coordinates. Now, the theory of thin plates, there are uh, three categories of plate theory. One is thin plate with uh, small deflection and another is thin plate with large deflection, where the large deflection involves the generation of in-plane forces. But in case of thin plate with small deflection, in-plane forces are neglected. And then the last category is thick plate. So, in our lecture, we will deal with the theory of thin plate with small deflection. Now, let us see what are the assumptions in the theory of thin plate. Thin plate theory was developed by Love in 1888 using the assumption proposed by Khrushchev and hence it is popularly known as Kirchhoff lab plate theory or more commonly as Kirchhoff's plate theory. Now, there are assumptions in the theory of thin plate that we have to take to uh, derive the uh, equation of motion as well as we formulate the problems boundary value problem. The following assumptions are made. The material is homogeneous and isotropic deflection is small, the normal to the middle surface of the plate before deformation remains normal to the plane after deformation. So, this is very important assumption based on that we can say that strain in jet direction is 0. The in plane forces are neglected because it is a small deflection theory for the thin plate and therefore, the stresses that we consider are of importance with sigma x, sigma y and tau x y or tau y x. For example, a plate is in the plane of in the plane x y. Suppose, this is x axis, y axis and this is origin and here is a plate rectangular plate of thickness h, uniform thickness let us see. So, uniform thickness h plate and length is A and width is B. Now, here the stresses that we need to consider are sigma x for equilibrium there will be oh, because the sides are equal. So, sigma x should balance this, uh, this force in this edge should balance this force and therefore, there is only one shear force, shear stress that is tau x y. Okay. Now, why two subscripts are used? The first subscript denotes the normal to the plane, the edge that I am showing in this figure and second subscript denotes the direction in which the stress acting. So, this is the shear stress that is acting in this plane. Similarly, on the opposite plane, there will be shear which is tau x y and on the adjacent edge we will get the shear stress edge tau y x because here y is perpendicular to this edge. So, in addition there will be normal stress sigma y and on the other edges adjacent opposite edges we will have this sigma y as well as 
tau y x. But for maintaining the moment equilibrium, we know that tau x y must be equal to tau y x. So, this is valid and we have only the stresses that are to be considered are sigma x non-zero or zero may be in some other cases, but we cannot neglect this and sigma y s and tau x y or tau y x etcetera. So, these are the stresses to be considered. Okay. So, these stresses to be considered. which stress has to be neglected? The stresses sigma z, tau x z, tau z y accompanied by other shear stress say tau z x, tau y z should be neglected, but they are not 0 actually, but their contribution to the deflection is small. So, therefore, we uh, ignore these stresses in the formulation of the plate problem, especially the thin plate with small deflection. Okay. Now, let us come to some definitions. We have this uh, important variable for the transverse deflection of the plate that is w, small w and it is a function of x, y and t. Z coordinate is insignificant here because thickness is small compared to the length and breadth. So, this is the transverse deflection. Transverse deflection of the plate of the plate at any location x y at any time instant t. Now, here you see the x axis is shown here, y axis is here and z axis is also shown. Now, if h is the thickness of the plate and uh, say h by 2, at a h by 2 we consider a plane which is known as middle plane or middle surface. whose role is same as the neutral axis in case of beam. Now, middle surface is at a depth of h by 2. So, all the quantities that we get stress resultant or bending moment shear force all are expressed as uh, in their respective unit per unit length. For example, the bending moment unit is kilo Newton meter or Newton meter and this is expressed as Newton meter per meter width of the plate. Similarly, the shear force which is say kilo Newton or Newton, it should be expressed in case of plate as Newton per meter or Newton per millimeter. So, like that. Now, due to deflection of the plate, the elastic line has a slope. So, you are seeing this the deflected surface here. In one section, the surface is shown as a dotted line and this is the slope of the uh, deflected surface. That angle is measured with respect to middle surface which is horizontal. So, if theta x is small then ten theta x is approximately equal to theta x. So, by that definition we get theta x equal to del w by del x is the slope in x direction and theta y the slope in y direction. Slope in y direction is del w by del y. So, this is slope in y direction, this is slope in x direction. Z direction here it is irrelevant. Okay. Now, see this figure due to this uh, bending the deflector surface that you are seeing the axial displacement is u here in this figure it is shown uh, as u and it is in the negative direction of the uh, x axis that x axis is measured positive towards right, but here we are measuring u towards left. So, the negative sign has to be given. So, now from this figure we can write if the angle theta x is equal to tan theta x, then we can write u is equal to minus z theta x, that means minus z del w by del x 
Hence, by definition of normal strain epsilon x, we get del u by del x equal to minus z del square w by del x square. So, that is the uh, strain in the x direction. Similarly, uh, we have this uh, on the other direction if I see a section, similarly I can relate b the def uh, deflection or displacement in the y direction b equal to minus z theta y that is nothing but minus z del w by del y. So, therefore, epsilon y is equal to del v by del y equal to minus z del square w by del y square. Therefore, shear strain also since we know this u and v, v is known, u is known. So, we can write the expression for shear strain gamma x y, this shear strain will exist because tau x y is non-zero. So, gamma x y is equal to del u by del y plus del v by del x. So, using these two expressions here for u and v in this expression, we get ultimately gamma x y equal to minus 2 z del square w by del x del y. So, now if I use the Hooke's law, Hooke's law is used to relate the strain and stress. So, using Hooke's law, we can write epsilon x equal to 1 by e sigma x minus mu into sigma y and epsilon y equal to 1 by e sigma y minus mu into sigma x. Now, what is mu? Mu is the Poisson ratio. So, every material has uh, some Poisson ratio for steel it is 0.25 or 0.3 if we use the steel plate for calculation, we can rightly assume the value of Poisson ratio between 0 0.25 to 0 0.3. Then E is the Young's modulus. Which we call modulus of elasticity. You see these two are in material constant. Other material constant here you see that gamma x y is written tau x y by g. So, g is related to your E and Poisson ratio. So, g is nothing but E divided by 2 into 1 plus mu. So, this is g is shear modulus. Shear modulus. So, if you know E and uh, mu, you can calculate g and then knowing the tau x y, you can calculate shear strain. Now, from these two equations epsilon x and epsilon y, these two equation, if I treat sigma x and sigma y are two unknown variables, then solving these two equations simultaneously, we get sigma x equal to E divided by 1 minus mu square epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y and sigma y equal to E divided by 1 minus mu square epsilon y plus mu into epsilon x. So, this is the expression for sigma x and sigma y. Now, let us see how these expressions can be utilized to calculate other stress resultant. Now, if I see a plate element under equilibrium with the transverse force x y q x y, but in dynamic case it will be a function of t also for dynamic loading. This q will vary with time also. So, all the quantities will vary with time. Suppose for example, m y if I say it will be also function of x y t. Similarly, q x if I say it will also be function of x y t for the dynamic problem that we are considering here. Now, the stress resultant that we have uh, uh, told that uh, will be generated in the plate due to loading in the transverse direction are the bending moment and twisting moment shearing force. Now, bending moment in the x direction let us see here, it is the bending moment m x. Now, on the opposite faces at a distance of d x, this distance is d x of the element and 
correspondingly this uh, perpendicular edge as a length of dy. Okay. So, in the opposite phases the bending moment will appear with some incremental quantity. So, plus del m x by del x into d x is the incremental quantity this may be negative also in some cases. So, in that case the bending moment will be decreasing. Okay. Now, similarly shear force along the edges which is parallel to y axis you very carefully note it the shear force quantity is shown as q x along the edge which is parallel to the y axis. So, this q x will be again accompanied by its incremental quantity del q x by del x into d x on the opposite edges. Now, we see the twisting moment m x y and uh, on the opposite faces the twisting moment will be the m x y plus del m x y by del x into d x. So, this is the incremental quantity. On the edges which is uh, parallel to x axis, then we get here the bending moment along y axis say m y and the opposite faces we have m y plus del m y by del y into d y this is the incremental or change in the bending moment from distance 0 to d y. Okay. Then uh, here you can see this uh, q y, q y the shear force distributed along this edge which is parallel to the x axis is denoted by q subscript y. So, this q y in the opposite faces is shown as q y plus del q y by del y d y in the reverse direction. Okay. Similarly, m y x you can see here on the opposite faces you can see the m y x is m x y plus del m x y by del y into d y. So, these are the stress resultant in the uh, plate element. In addition, if it is vibrating in the transverse direction, the inertia force that must act on the plate inertia force is due to uh, this uh, mass of the plate say rho is the mass density of the plate that is mass per unit area into acceleration. So, this is the inertia force. So, along with inertia force and other the stresses that are shown here and transverse load that is external load acting. Here of course, we are neglecting damping, but if damping is also considered, if damping is considered then damping force in the plate is denoted by C del W by del T. So, here you can see this is the acceleration term del square W by del T square is the acceleration term. So, acceleration into mass but rho here is the mass per unit area per unit area. Actually we generally for any material we know the mass per unit volume therefore, this expression need to be changed. So, if uh, say m is the mass per unit volume then rho will be m into h where h is the thickness of the plate. So, you take this into consideration sometimes in numerical problem you may be given mass per unit volume and thickness is given. So, we require actually for calculation of plate stresses mass per unit area. So, you just you convert it into mass per unit area by multiplying m with h. Okay. So, along with these forces, this inertia force and damping forces, the plate vibration equation can be uh, derived using the Newton's force balance. And uh, of course, in this uh, first lecture, we will neglect the damping and we will consider only the dynamic equation only with uh, this uh, inertia force and external force. Of course, for free vibration analysis, again we will neglect the external forces. Okay. Now, let us see how the quantities in stress resultant that is m x m y m x y 
or q x q y m x y are expressed in terms of deflection. Now, here the thickness is small actually, here in magnified scale I have drawn it, but actually the thickness of the plate is small. So, therefore, there is no significance of the z variable in the plate problem. So, plate deflection etcetera or bending moment shear force etcetera are measured at any location x y at any time instant t. So, z has no significant. So, only this x y t are significant. Now, first let us see what are the stress resultant for moments. So, m x m x is the bending moment along x direction. So, if I uh, take a, a small element say here a small element that you are showing with a hashed uh, quantities and there you can see this d z is the thickness of this element. Okay? Thickness of this element. So, bending moment along x axis can be calculated if I know the forces acting on this element, if the stresses sigma x that is acting normal to the edge is considered to be uniformly distributed on the small element, then the force in the small element is sigma x d z and its distance from the neutral plane is uh, z, then moment is calculated as integration of uh, sigma x z d z into 1, d z into 1 is the area of the this unit, this small uh, element that I have shown here and integrating for all such element, we will get the resulting moment acting on this h per unit length. So, here the integration has to be carried out across the thickness of the plate, since it is the neutral uh, surface is taken or middle surface is taken as the datum. So, therefore, this z is measured positive upward from the neutral axis and negative uh, downward from the neutral axis. Therefore, the limit of the integration, the lower limit is minus h by 2 and upper limit is h by 2. After integrating this expression, z dz will be integrated. So, z square by 2 and after putting the limit then uh, we can get, but before that we will first express sigma x in terms of epsilon x. So, writing sigma x in terms of epsilon x, the constant, the common constant E divided by 1 minus mu square is coming out, mu is the Poisson ratio and then inside this we are writing actually the strains epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y, z dz. Now, already this epsilon x is written as earlier we have seen epsilon x is nothing but z del square w by del x square and epsilon y is nothing but minus z del square w by del y square. So, substituting this epsilon x and epsilon y in terms of curvature, then we get the integration has to be carried out with respect to uh, d z and the, the variable is z square. So, the this term del square w by del x square plus mu into del square w by del y square will not contain any z. So, it will be taken as a constant outside the integral sign. So, integrating z square d z that means, it will be z cube by 3 and putting the limit minus h by 2 to plus h by 2, we ultimately get the expression for bending moment per unit length as minus E h cube divided by 12 1 minus mu square into del square w by del x square plus mu into del square w by del y square. Now, here a quantity that appearing as a constant in the final expression is E h cube 1 minus mu square. Suppose it is uh, considered as a beam of uh, say unit width. Then the h cube into 1 divided by 12 is nothing but moment of inertia of the beam. So, E i that you are telling or you are seeing here if it is a beam, then it is nothing but flexural rigidity of the beam. Now, in case of plate which is a two dimensional element the Poisson effect has to be considered. So, therefore, 
the flexural rigidity that we considered in case of beam will no longer be valid here. It will be E h cube divided by 12 1 minus mu square. So, this is nothing but flexural rigidity of plate and popularly denoted by the symbol d. Flexural rigidity of plate. If a beam of unit width is considered and thickness of the beam is h, then the rigidity of the uh, flexural rigidity of the beam will be E h cube by 12, but here the difference is coming that in the denominator a factor 1 minus mu square is inserted. So, this is due to Poisson effects and it is coming automatically by the process of substitution and integration. Okay. So, now having known the expression for bending moment acting along the edge per unit length m x is bending moment along x axis per unit length. Now, we go for obtaining the bending moment along the y direction and it is similarly derived say m y equal to say here you see this element the stress acting normal stress acting is sigma y. So, sigma y into d z into 1 is the force and multiplied by lever arm that is z is the moment about the neutral x neutral uh, plane. So, it is integrated again with uh, limit minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 and substituting uh, sigma y in terms of epsilon y and epsilon x that is strains. We now get the m y equal to minus e by 1 minus mu square uh, this integration minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 epsilon y plus mu into epsilon x z dz. Now, substituting epsilon y and epsilon x in terms of curvature, we now get the expression that have to be integrated is minus e by 1 minus mu square that is constant and another constant we can take here because this will not be a function of z. So, this constant is del square w by del y square plus mu into del square w by del x square. So, the expression to be integrated is z square d z with a limit minus h by 2 to plus h by 2. The final result is again you can see m y equal to minus e h cube by 12 into 1 minus mu square bracket del square w by del y square plus mu into del square w by del x square. So, this is nothing but d. This expression uh, that parameter is nothing but flexural rigidity of the plate. So, it can be written as minus d del square w that is the curvature in y direction into mu into Poisson ratio into curvature along x direction. This is the bending moment m y acting per unit length. Then m x y is the twisting moment is generated due to shear force. So, therefore, if again the area is d z into 1 and shear force is tau x y d z into 1 and its uh, moment about the neutral surface is uh, this force into z, z is the lever arm. So, now integrating this with a limit minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 again we will substitute tau x y in terms of this uh, strains. So, tau x y is nothing but g into gamma x y and then g is again substituted as e divided by 2 into 1 plus mu. So, therefore, after substituting this and the uh, gamma x y that is the shear strain again can be written in terms of mixed derivative. So, it is written as del square w by del x del y and z square term is coming. So, after integrating this expression we get the expression for twisting moment m x y as minus e h cube divided by 12 1 minus mu square into 1 minus mu del square w by del x del y. So, it is actually d again. So, this expression can be written as again d 1 minus mu del square w by del x del y that is the mixed derivative. Okay. So, now let us see this is the expression for bending moment uh, m x that is bending moment along x direction 
whose unit is uh, say bending moment unit per unit length. Similarly, here also bending moment in y direction and twisting moment m x y along both the edges you will see adjacent edge also has a twisting moment m y x, but since tau x y is equal to tau y x. So, m x y equal to m y x. So, you are getting this expression for bending moment uh, and twisting moment in the plate, where d is the flexural rigidity of the plate. Okay. Now, let us come to the shear force. So, shear force q x per unit width, this is also have to be remembered, this expression is per unit width, all the quantities are per unit width. So, therefore, del m x by del, del x plus del m y x by del y. Now, we already get the expression, we have already got the expression for m x. So, therefore, we are substituting this m x here, m x is substitute, substituted here with d, d is also there. Similarly, m y x is substituted here, this this cross derivative as well as this parameter d into 1 minus mu and therefore, the q x after rearranging becomes q x equal to minus d del by del x into del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square. So, this is a very famous quantity and it is known as this, uh, this operator is known as Laplacian operator. So, we can write this in this form, where Laplacian is equal to del square by del x square plus del square by del y square. Similarly, q y can be written as del m y by del y plus del m x y by del x and again it is becoming like that minus d uh, del by del y into del square w. So, shearing force quantities are written in this manner. Now, let us come to the S shear force. Now, it is seen that uh, at the edges you will find shear force as well as the twisting moment. However, the effect of twisting moment can be converted into equivalent shear force. So, therefore, S shear force can be written here say along the edge uh, parallel to y axis, it is written the total shear force will be v x d y is nothing but q x d y plus this is the equivalent shear force into d y. So, after cancelling this d y term and substituting q x and a m x y from our previous expression, now we get the S shear, suppose the edge is defined by the distance x is equal to a, this edge will be parallel to y axis. So, B x uh, that is the S shear force along this edge x is equal to a is nothing but d into del cube w by del x cube plus 2 into minus mu into del cube w by del x del y square. Similarly, at y is equal to b, we have v y is equal to d del cube w by del y cube plus 2 minus mu into del cube w by del y del x square. Now, let us go to energy expression for the plate. If somebody wants to obtain the uh, formulation in uh, energy form, that means, if somebody wants to apply Hamilton principle to derive the equation of motion then one should know the expression for kinetic energy, potential energy etcetera. So, kinetic energy of the plate is given by the half integration area integral rho into del y del w by del t which is the velocity of the plate at any location at any time instant t square. So, velocity square d x d y. So, this expression has to be integrated to get the total kinetic energy of the plate. Similarly, the strain energy of the plate now can be written due to bending only, only we are considering bending and twisting effect. So, d by 2 area integration m x del square w by del x square plus 
plus m y del square w by del y square plus 2 m x y del square w by del x del y integration d x d y. Substituting the expression for m x m y and 2 m x y, one can obtain now u is equal to d by 2 area integration del square w by del x square whole square plus del square w by del y square whole square plus 2 mu del square w by del x square into del square w by del y square plus 2 into 1 minus mu del square w by del x del y whole square. You can see here it is a purely a square of the curvature here also in x direction and y direction square of the curvature and here you can see the product of the curvature and here you are getting mixed curvature square. So, the strain energy now if I say symbolically if I write k x is curvature along y x direction and k y is curvature along y direction and k x y is the twist curvature then strain energy expression can be written in compact form say area integral k x square plus k y square plus 2 mu k x k y plus 2 1 minus mu into k x y square and d x d y. So, that is the uh, strain energy expression for the plate. Now, it can be rearranged further. So, it is written as d by 2 double area integration del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square whole square minus 2 into 1 minus mu into the product of two curvatures minus the square of the twist curvature and the integration is carried out. So, this term is again written in a compact form with del square w and whole square minus 2 into 1 minus mu and this product of two curvature minus the square of the twist curvature. Now, you can see this is the general expression for the strain energy of the plate, but in some plate all edges are supported. Supported means it may be clamped or it may be simply supported. In whatever manner if the plate is supported along all edges, then the expression containing the uh, expression in this uh, second bracket here can be omitted. So, now the strain energy expression for the plate which has all edges supported can be written as u is equal to d by 2 area integration del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square whole square d x d y. Okay. Now, come to the uh, vibration of the plate. We will consider first the rectangular plate in rectangular coordinate system. So, here the operator del 4 is defined as del 4 by del x 4 plus 2 del 4 by del x square del y square plus del 4 by del y to the power 4. Now, fourth order equation is now evident in case of plate, because now the force balance will yield a equation of this type. If we neglect the rotary inertia and shear deformation, then it will result in this type of equation d del 4 w equal to q x y t minus rho del square w by del t square. So, you can identify this term, this term is nothing but inertia force, where rho is the mass per unit area of the plate and d is the flexural rigidity of the plate. Now, plate may have different boundary conditions, here we are giving you one boundary condition in this slide. So, all edges are simply supported. So, dash dash line that are shown, it is the symbol for simply supported edges. So, at x is equal to 0, if this uh, the origin and this is the direction of x axis, this is the direction of y axis and this side is A, this side is B. 
So, x is equal to 0, deflection is 0 and curvature that I am writing uh, del square w by del x square is 0, but this equation comes from the original equation that is bending moment in the simply supported case should be 0. So, bending moment at simply supported edge is 0. So, that is the original equation, but since this edge where edge is supported along the y axis. So, there cannot be any curvature, any deflection along the y axis, so no curvature. So, that means this term is vanished. So, therefore, we get only this one term del square w by del x square. Similarly, x is equal to a, we have w is equal to 0, del square w by del x square equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, we have this w is equal to 0 and del square w by del y square equal to 0. Then y is equal to b, we have boundary condition deflection 0 and curvature in the y direction is 0. This is coming from the same reasoning as we have done in case of this uh, the edges which is uh, parallel to y axis. Now, this edge is parallel to x axis, this is the this edge at y is equal to b located at y is equal to b, here the curvature along the x axis will be 0. So, therefore, only one term remains in the bending moment expression and that is del square w by del y square equal to 0. Now, let us uh, display a case of clamped edge, a clamped or fixed edge that is this edge of the plate is welded for example, a steel plate is welded to another uh, steel element say steel joist or something. Then here due to fixity, there cannot be any deflection and slope is also 0. So, therefore, at the clamped edge, this as say O A, if we see this edge as O A, that is here this uh, y is equal to 0, this edge is y is equal to 0, we have deflection is 0 and del w by del y at y is equal to 0. Similarly, at the adjacent edge say A B, this edge is also fixed. So, this is actually the edge which is parallel to this uh, x axis. So, therefore, in this case you have this the deflection w at x is equal to a is 0 and del w by del x at x is equal to a is 0. So, these two equations are satisfied due to these boundary conditions. Now, come to the free edge at the free edge there cannot be any stress. So, therefore, the bending moment in this edge along the x axis say m x is 0 as well as twisting moment m x y at this edge which is situated at x is equal to a is 0 and q x the shear force along this edge is also 0. So, three boundary conditions are written here, but uh, it is ultimately found that two boundary condition can be combined that is m x y and q x can be combined to give a single condition of s shear. So, therefore, this uh, condition has been noted and documented in the theory of plates and it is known as Kirchhoff's s shear and it is given by combining the effect of m x y with the q x. So, this s shear at this edge free edge is now minus d del cube w by del x cube plus 2 minus mu into del cube w by del x del y square equal to 0. And so, this is one boundary condition at the free edge, another boundary condition is this minus d del square w by del x square plus mu into del square w by del y square. So, here v is the s shear force. Okay. So, when we uh, require to solve the problem of plate where the one edge or two edge remains free, then we have to use the s shear condition. Now, there are some plates where you will get a non classical boundary condition. Classical boundary conditions are pinned or simply supported or hinged or supported on roller, there will be same condition and then you have this uh, condition like that clamped and free. So, these are classical boundary condition, but when we encounter non classical boundary condition like that of 
uh, edge supported over the linear spring or rotational spring. Uh, here is a case where the one edge of the plate say x is equal to a, the plate is this is origin. So, x is equal to a, the plate is supported over this linear spring. So, as a result of this, the bending moment at this edge is 0, at x is equal to a is 0. So, therefore, we get this expression del square w by del x square plus mu into del square w by del y square equal to 0, where mu is the Poisson ratio. Similarly, uh, another condition must be satisfied that is the S shear. So, S shear should balance the spring force due to vertical deflection of the plate at the free edges, the spring will offer a upward resistance or opposite uh, resistance in the opposite direction. So, that force should be taken into account to write down the force balance equation along this edge. So, considering this at this edge free edge, second boundary condition is minus d that is the S shear into del cube w by del x cube plus 2 minus mu del cube w by del x del y square plus k w, k w is the spring force that is equal to 0. Okay. Now, come to the uh, case where the, the edge x is equal to a is supported by rotational spring. So, the moment of resistance offered by the rotational spring is to be balanced by the bending moment acting along the edge. So, this is the bending moment expression you can see and it is balanced by the resisting torque that is if beta is the uh, rotational spring constant then beta into del w by del x is the resisting torque and it is balanced by the bending moment at this edge. And other condition S shear is again 0 at this case because it is a rotational uh, spring. So, there is no upward force to balance the vertical S shear. Now, let us come to the uh, dynamic equation. So, equation of motion governing differential equation of motion is a fourth order equation and it is popularly written as d del 4 w plus rho del square w by del t square. This is the inertia force. Here we have neglected the damping as well as the external force. So, we are considering the free undamped vibration. Del 4 is the operator which is del 4 by del x 4 plus 2 del to the power 4 by del x square del y square plus del to the power 4 by del y to the power 4. Now, for free vibration one can assume that motion is harmonic because free vibration motion is always harmonic, it is mathematically proved. So, therefore, the transverse displacement of the plate at any instant of time at any location x y is given by capital W x y. This is the space function which is generally known as Eigen function into a harmonic term and it is including the phase we can write now with a exponential raised to the power a imaginary quantity. So, e to the power i omega t is nothing but say some constant uh, cos omega t plus i sin omega t. So, this quantity represents both phase and amplitude. So, therefore, we have used the harmonic term with exponential components that is e to the power i omega t which uh, actually uh, represent both cosine and sine term and ultimately it will give the phase angle also. So, substitute this in the equation of motion del 4 w minus rho omega square by d into w this is the capital W which is different from small w. Small w is a function of x, y and t whereas, after separation of variable capital W is the function of only x and y it is equal to 0. Denoting rho omega square by d equal to gamma to the power 4 a frequency parameter we can now write this equation as del 4 minus gamma 4 into w equal to 0. So, after factorizing we can write del square that is Laplacian minus gamma square into del square Laplacian plus gamma square into w equal to 0. Now, we can see that two function 
W1 and W2 will satisfy the each of the term in the expression. So, suppose W1 and W2 are two function which satisfies this one equation uh, del square plus gamma square W1 equal to 0 and another equation del square minus gamma square W2 equal to 0. Then we can compose the total uh, complete solution as W equal to W1 plus W2. Now, let us take this first equation. This equation is del square plus uh, gamma square into uh, w 1. So, that is nothing but your this equation. It is similar to membrane equation that you are familiar in the earlier module. So, this equation we know already and solution we obtain in this form. So, w 1 equal to because it is a free vibration equation of membrane rectangular membrane and we know this equation as w 1 equal to a 1 sin alpha x sin beta y plus a 2 sin alpha x cos beta y plus a 3 cos alpha x sin beta y plus a 4 cos alpha x cos beta y, where alpha and beta is related by this expression alpha square plus beta square equal to gamma square. So, once we find gamma or alpha and beta, then we can find gamma and from gamma we can compute the frequency, natural frequency of the plate. The second equation let us take in this form del square minus gamma square into w 2 equal to 0. Its solution has to be obtained in different way. So, let the solution be written as separation of other two variables say x capital X and y. This w 2 is written uh, as a function of two separated function. One function is purely a function of x and another function is purely a function of y. So, product of this is assumed to be function of w 2. So, now substituting this in this differential equation we will get capital Y d square x by d x square plus capital X d square y by d y square minus gamma square x y equal to 0. Divide both sides by x into y. So, x y product is taken to divide the both sides of this equation. Then we get 1 by x into d square x by d x square plus 1 by y d square y by d y square equal to gamma square. So, here you can see the first term is a function of x purely a function of x and second term is only a function of y and their sum is equal to gamma. So, gamma square. So, it indicates that uh, this should be individually constant. So, therefore, we have this uh, say alpha bar square plus beta bar square and we take this as gamma bar square. Say previously we have used gamma. So, distinguish it uh, from the first solution we take this term as alpha bar square and this term as beta bar square and this is gamma bar square. Now, solution of such equation is written as because it will yield the positive root because now if I want to find the solution equal to alpha square x equal to 0 and if I assume that x is equal to say some constant e to the power say uh, p into x where p is a variable or constant. Then after substituting this we get this equal to uh, p square minus alpha bar square equal to 0. So, this gives p is equal to two roots one is plus alpha bar another is minus alpha bar. So, naturally we will get this x as say b 1 e to the power alpha x plus b 2 
e to the power minus alpha x. Now, we can write e to the power alpha x as cos hyperbolic alpha x plus sin hyperbolic alpha x and e to the power minus alpha x we can write cos hyperbolic alpha x minus sin hyperbolic alpha x. So, with this uh, substitution now the solution is written uh, in this form the solution is written b 1 sin h alpha bar x plus b 2 cos h alpha bar x. Similarly, for equation that uh, this equation is coming from the this is the solution of this equation d square y d y square minus beta bar square y equal to 0. So, we are writing this solution as b 3 sin hyperbolic beta bar y plus b 4 cos hyperbolic beta bar y. So, total solution is now composed of uh, w 2 that is the solution x into y. So, we are getting previously we have introduced the constant up to a 4 a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4. Now, we are introducing the constant a 5 a 6 a 7 a 8 because there are 4 roots plus alpha minus alpha plus beta minus beta. So, we have 4 terms and 4 constants of integration. So, a 5 sin hyperbolic alpha bar x sin hyperbolic beta bar y plus a 6 sin alpha bar x cos hyperbolic beta bar y plus a 7 cos hyperbolic alpha bar x sin hyperbolic beta bar y plus a 8 cos hyperbolic alpha bar x cos hyperbolic beta bar y. So, the solution is now written w x y we are now here the 8 constants you can see these first 4 terms are coming from the membrane solution. This is coming from membrane solution. And this is the extra solution that we have found that has to be added here. So, we are here this fourth constants of integration with uh, the parameter sin alpha x sin beta y sin alpha x cos beta y cos alpha x sin beta y cos alpha x cos beta y. Similarly, we have other four constants say a 5, a 6, a 7, a 8 associated with hyperbolic function combination of sin hyperbolic and cos hyperbolic we have got this 8 terms in this equation. Now, this has to be found out imposing the boundary condition for the edges. Now, we consider only simply supported edge because this solution of Eigen function is only valid for simply supported conditions. Other conditions it may not be it will not work. So, boundary condition for simply supported edges if x is equal to 0 edge is simply supported then deflection is 0 here for all time and curvature is also 0 all time. Then uh, this at uh, this y is equal to 0 also deflection is 0 and curvature is 0 at y is equal to 0. So, therefore, from this condition x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 we get this 4 constants uh, this constant not only 4, the 7 constants can be eliminated. So, a 2 to a 8 can be eliminated and we get w x y equal to a 1 sin alpha x sin beta y is the only term a 1 sin alpha x sin beta y is the only term that remains in the expression consisting of 8 terms because of the advantage that we get from simply supported boundary condition. Okay. Now, at x is equal to a, we have w a y equal to 0 and therefore, we can write a 1 sin alpha a sin beta y equal to 0, but for all y the sin beta y is not 0. So, therefore, we get sin alpha a equal to 0 that gives alpha m a equal to m pi, m varies from 1 to up to infinity. Similarly, for y is equal to b for all x we get w x b equal to 0 that is a 1 sin alpha x sin beta b equal to 0 that gives 
beta n b equal to n pi that is n is equal to 1 to up to infinity. So, after substituting this we now get alpha m square plus beta n square equal to gamma m n square and substituting alpha m as m pi by a and uh, beta n as n pi by b we get this expression m square pi square by s square plus n square pi square by b square equal to gamma m n square. So, this uh, gamma m n is now uh, this related to frequency, we will now index this frequency parameter gamma m n and uh, omega m n. So, this uh, gamma m n means the m comma nth mode that is m half waves are formed in the x direction and n half waves are formed in the y direction that is the meaning of this two subscript that is used here. So, from this expression omega m n can be written as root over d by rho gamma square m n and this is nothing but pi square m square by s square plus n square by b square root over d by rho. Now, introducing this aspect ratio r that is a by b we can now write omega m n equal to pi square into m square plus r square n square root over d by rho a to the power 4. So, that we can write. Okay. Now, here you can see that uh, for aspect ratio that is where m is equal to n we get omega k k say k k is used as a index here. So, omega k k is k square omega 1 1. So, that means, if I want to find say omega 3 3 it will be 9 times of the fundamental natural frequency of the plate. So, naturally the mode shape now contains only one function and the constant remain unknown and that can be normalized by different ways. So, w m n is the eigen function in the m n modes and equal to a m n sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b. So, it can be seen that mode shapes are similar to the mode shapes of clamped rectangular membrane, but frequencies are different. So, therefore, the mode shape appearance will be same. Now, here if we display the mode shapes for a aspect ratio a by b equal to 0 0.5 in mode 1 1 which is equal to omega 1 1. Now, you can see the no nodal lines are observed and only one half waves are formed in both the directions. But here when m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, two half waves are formed in the y direction and therefore, we get a nodal line parallel to the x axis. This is x axis and this is y axis. Here when m is equal to 1, n is equal to 3, no nodal lines are formed along the x axis, but two nodal lines are formed along this uh, x direction. So, two nodal lines are formed. This is what is nodal lines, where deflection is 0. The support is excluded. Supports are also nodal line, but supports are excluded here. Similarly, in the higher mode you will get a more number of nodal lines. So, here the m is equal to 2 that means, one half wave is formed in the x direction. So, therefore, you are getting one nodal line. This uh, mode 2 2 you will get two nodal lines and here 2 3 in the x direction you will get this uh, nodal line as 1, but along this direction you will get two nodal line because here n is equal to 3, m is equal to 2 gives you single nodal line, but n is equal to 3 will give you two nodal lines. So, and its frequency is 5 times the fundamental natural frequency. Similarly, for higher modes you can see the nodal lines are formed. For example, the modes 3 1 
that means uh, the for m direction mode is an uh, m is 3 so two half waves are formed so therefore two nodal lines will be formed here and in the other direction no nodal lines because the n is 1 so similarly here you can see that m is equal to 3 so in the x direction you will get uh, this two half waves are formed so therefore you will get two nodal lines here and one nodal lines in this direction similarly for m3 in both the directions you will get two nodal lines so in this way you can sketch the nodal lines nodal line significance is that in the nodal lines any point situated on the nodal lines has no deflection so therefore suppose in a problem this only uh, this mode uh, say 3 2 is excited and a point where we are interested to find the bending moment or deflection is situated on the nodal lines then we can immediately say that this point will have no uh, deflection or no bending moment because these quantities are generated due to deflection and if the deflections are zero in the nodal lines so no other stress resultant will be produced at, along the nodal lines the mode shapes are orthogonal as we have seen in case of membrane also let us prove the orthogonality of the modes we have for any mode mn the free vibration equation is d del 4 w mn equal to minus rho omega mn square into w mn equal to 0 multiply both sides by w r s we can find d del 4 w mn w r s minus rho omega mn square w mn w r s equal to 0 now substitute this uh, this w r s we now interchange the operator so we write in this fashion you can see here this is r s is brought with the del 4 operator and uh, w m n is written separately now writing this in this form from free vibration in the r s mode also we have this relation d del 4 w r s equal to rho omega r s square w r s so substituting here this expression if i substitute d del 4 w r s equal to uh, rho omega square r s w r s then we get ultimately this relation bracket omega r s square minus omega m n square into double integration that is area integration rho into w r s into w m n d x d y equal to 0. If r is equal to not m uh, that is uh, for r is equal to not m and this s is equal to not n then we get this integral is 0, but where it is uh, equal that is r is equal to m and s is equal to n then we get non-zero value of the integral. The non-zero value of the integral may be useful for normalization procedure. So, let us see how we can do it. So, if I want to do the normalization with respect to mass suppose m is equal to r and n is equal to s and let us take the mode shape function of rectangular plate with arbitrary amplitude say a m n sin m x pi by a sin n pi y by b and w r s equal to a r s sin r pi x by a sin s pi y by b then we can write the integration double integration 0 to a 0 to b rho a square m n sin square m pi x by a sin square n pi y by b d x d y and if it is normalized with respect to mass then we can take right hand side as 1. But this integration we know sin square m pi x by a into d x integration with respect to uh, limit 0 to a will be a by 2. Similarly, here if I integrate sin square n pi y by b with respect to d y with a limit 0 to b we get b by 2. So, ultimately we get rho a m n square a b by 4 equal to 1. So, a m n becomes 2 by root over rho a b, but you can see the rho is the density per unit area of the plate 
n a b is the area of the plate. So, m p is the total mass of the plate. So, we can write a m n constant as 2 by uh, root over rho a b. So, mode shape function after normalization with mass can be written as 2 by root m p sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b. Now, with the help of mode shape and uh, natural frequency that we evaluated earlier and using the mode supervision principle, we can write w x y t as a summation double summation w m n x y q m n t, where q m n is the time dependent generalized coordinate. Now, substituting this in the differential equation that I have shown by arrow, you have to substitute this in the differential equation, you will get this d is double sum del 4 w m n q m n t double sum rho w m n q double dot m n t. Double sum is with respect to m and n, m and n varies from 1 to infinity. So, multiply both sides by another mode shape w r s and integrate over the domain of the plate and use the orthogonality condition that we derived earlier. Orthogonality condition was that rho integration of rho w m n into w r s d x d y equal to 1 that is the mass normalized uh, condition. So, with that condition we now get the discretized equation as q double dot m n t plus omega square m n q m n t equal to 0 and m n varies from 1, 2, 3 up to infinity. So, let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, we have discussed the thin plate theory and given necessary relations for stress resultance and various boundary conditions. Then we have formulated eigenvalue problem of rectangular plate simply supported along all sides. Properties of natural frequencies and mode shapes are discussed. Orthogonal relation between two modes was derived. Discretization of partial differential equation of motion in time dependent generalized coordinates using mode supervision technique along with orthogonality condition was shown. Thank you very much. Thank you.